What's up, nerds and gamers from all walks of life? Just in case you didn't know, my name's Justin, and welcome to my channel, Just In Case Gaming. Now, today we have a very special review to do because the good people over at the Deck of Many have provided us with their campaign, Humblewood, PDF version, for us to take a look at. So thanks to them, and we are going to dive into it and see exactly what it is that makes Humblewood your next campaign. Do you want to be a hedgehog that is a bard? Do you want to be a crow that can be a necromancer and summon undead birdies to fight at your side? Let's take a look and see exactly what is Humblewood. Let's dive in. Here we are again, back at the whiteboard gamers, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Deck of Minis Humblewood Campaign Settings PDF. The good people over at the Deck of Mini were kind enough to provide us with this review copy. So first of all, thank you, Deck of Mini. And I just wanted to share this with you guys, and we're gonna do a flip through and give you kind of a little taste of exactly what the Humblewood has in store for you. If you want to use this as your next D&D campaign, or maybe you just wanna take some of the creatures and spells and uh, the weapons from this campaign and work them into your own. We're gonna just go through that real quick, but a couple of notes first. This PDF retails on the Deck of Minis uh, website, thedeckofmini.com for uh, $29.99. You also have a physical copy of this book that you can get from their website, and that'll set you back $49.99, but they also have a great deal on their box set, which is $79.99, and it comes with everything physical that you get in the PDF, which you actually get quite a bit. I'll show you real quick. We're gonna go back. You get the campaign setting, the maps, you also get some uh, little reference cards and little uh, notes and some standees. So that's pretty cool. And you also get some animated spell cards within it. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a flip through of the campaign setting. Sorry, I don't really have a better setup for this. Um, we are still working on getting all of that together for you guys. But this is the uh, cover art of the book. And I think that looks absolutely stunning. The way that that uh, Corvum, that's called a Corvum, and the way that he's just standing there with his staff and that fireball spell, that is so, so, so cool. Uh, they also are very into user feedback. So they have different little links that you can go for feedback, errors, if you want to join their Discord server or follow them on Twitter, you can do that. This was actually a Kickstarter campaign and they raised over a million dollars to get this funded to bring us this amazing campaign setting. Take a look at the artwork. That is just stunning. And I believe that is called the Alder Tree, which is kind of the main focal point of the storyline. It's where all of the humble folk and the bird folk reside. There's some credits. Here's the contents. Our foreword. Here's the preface. And let's get into the nitty gritty of it. In the faraway world of Everden, on the eastern coast of the great continent lies a vast forest nestled between the mountains and the sea. This is the Humblewood, an ancient magical place that hums an endless song sung to the great rhythm of life and death. The wood, as it is known to its inhabitants, is not like any other forest. The trees are old and powerful with rare specimens that reach as tall as small mountains. Here, familiar beasts grow to unusual sizes, bearing markings and patterns unique to the wood. This region is also home to two groups of animal-like humanoid races, the bird folk and the humble folk. Together, they share the wood and its bountiful resources. You guys can read the rest of that if you'd like. We're just going to go ahead and skip into the good stuff. Here we go. Welcome to the wood, races of the wood. We have the bird folk here. And these are our different races of bird folk. We have the Luma, the Corvum, Raptor, Gallus, and the Strig. And it gives us a little 
backstory of each of these types of races. And then here we have the humble folk, which is your, uh, these are your bird people here. And then you have the other little uh, denizens of the forest, such as the vulpin, the mapak, mapak, the gerbine, the hedge, and the servin. They're also cute. So here's my personal favorite, the corvum, which are uh, these raven and crow-like creatures. And they have all kinds of really interesting traits. Corvums reach adulthood around 18 years. They live for about 70 years. Their alignment, neutral. It seems to be their, their speed. Um, I also really like the bird folk because they have this really awesome trait, the glide, which is basically feather fall. I like that. That's really cool. The dusk corvum, the kindled corvum. And here's the gallus, which are these uh, rooster-like individuals. They're very social and communal close-knit communities where they roost. I don't want to give away too much, which is why I'm not going to sit here and read everything word for word. I'm just going to kind of do a little flip through. I've already read some of it myself, but I'm just giving you guys a quick little taste to see if this is something that you would like to run in your own campaigns. Here's the Luma. These are very, very beautiful uh, creatures. They seem to be more of your spell casters, um, maybe using some divination, things of that nature. Here's their traits. And you can create a multitude of different types of these creatures. You're not just bound to the different types of birds and things that you see here. You're gonna really be able to, if there's a type of bird or an animal that you're really wanting to be, they actually have some statistics on here on how to work that into whatever race that you're going to be. We have the raptor, which they seem to be more of the uh, Hawkeye-like characters, your Robin Hoods. And it seems like all of the bird folk have this glide trait, which is nice for that feather falling ability. The Marin Raptor, that's a really cool design. We have the Strig, which if I were gonna play uh, any race from here, I would probably either do the Strig or the Corvum, just because I really like owls and I like ravens. So, um, strong and brave. And one thing uh, also that I, wow, that's cool. I wanna be that character. Uh, one of the things that I find really interesting about the world of Humblewood is how the alder tree works, which we'll get to that chapter. But the alder tree is where all of these humble folk, like the Servin here, here's the Servin, more of your uh, cleric type of races, it seems. The hedge, which are these hedgehogs. It, come on, guys, that's a hedgehog bard. If that doesn't make you want to play this campaign, <laughs> I don't know what will do it for you, because that is awesome. Um, but the way that their communities work, in the Alder Tree, there's this caste system, where if you are toward the top of the tree, you are higher class, you are more noble, you have more money. And if you're lower uh, on, the, on the tree, you are considered more low class on the um, on the social climbing ladder. And I find that to be fascinating. There's a lot of story plots you could do with that. Here's the Jerbeam. I shall reclaim the Gasperian Isles and return to my family to their homeland. My name is Inigo Montoya. I shall kill my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> That's what this little mouse reminds me of. And these are the Jerbeam. Th th this is probably my third favorite little race, these little mouse guys, and they apparently have um, uh, this leaping trait, standing leap, you base long jump, your base long jump is 30 feet, and your base high jump is 15 feet, 
with or without a running start. That is really cool. These guys could just bounce around all over the map. The Maypok, which are your raccoon craftsmen. Uh, apparently all of the scientific um, breakthroughs have been designed by these little creatures throughout the alder tree. You have the Vulpin, which are artful and cunning. And these are these fox folk right here. I love all the little flavor texts that they give you. And you can do a uh, height and weight generator right here. The sex and gender, different looks for your bird folk or humble folk. Um, and then it tells right here what other types of birds and animals that your different um, uh, race could be. So they're like, they're, they're different versions. It's really cool. Here's the languages, your bird folk, servant, hedge, derbeen, mapak, vulpin. That's really cool. I like how they give you all of the different um, dialects, primordial, aran, aquan, eigen, and terran. The uncommon languages known only by few in the wood. And here is something that really caught my eye. This is your own little language. Um, this is the humble folk language, and it actually gives you how to write that. So you can give your characters little written um, pieces within the language of the humble folk. That's so cool. Your class options. So you have your bard. Traveler trick options. Cleric. Divine Strike, that sounds cool. Eighth level. Ability to infuse your weapon with the power to punish wrongdoing. That's cool. Ward of Shadows, that catches my eye. Night Domain, Eye of Twilight. Scoff Law features. Again, this is just a, a flip through. We're not gonna sit here and go into every little uh, detail of it. If you all want to see that, let me know and I will. Um, this is cool. Characteristics, personality traits, and they give you a little table that you can roll for each one of your characters. And here are some new feats. Aerial expert, bandit cunning, opportunistic thief, perfect landing. Speech of the Ancient Beasts, Woodwise, and Heavy Glider. And of course, what is a new campaign book without some new spells? So we have the Bard spells, Cleric spells, Druid, Paladin, Ranger, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard spells. Now this is something that I loved. It comes with uh, this campaign PDF and the physical copy as well, that box set actually comes with these little animated spell cards, and I'll show you those uh, later on in the video. But you have all these new spells, Feathered, Reach, Gust Barrier, Globe of Twilight, that looks insane. All of those little constellations right there. That is so cool. Invoke of the Amaranth, Shape Plant, Spiny Shield, Stellar Bodies, Veil of Dusk, that looks really interesting all right and they also have their own religions within this and they go in depth in this book with all of the um of course the bird folk and the humble folk have differentiating uh religions but this is their religion tree altus chlorin gesme harana hanera hanera rea ardea titan Kareth, Gaspard, Hath, Henwin, and Kren. And it gives you their alignment, their race, their domains, and what their symbol is for you to use in your campaign. This is Ardea. Neutral good. Titan. Lawful neutral. Just massive <laughs> birds like this one. Here's the ocean, and then there's like a 
a chalice or something and he's just moving the clouds and the ocean. That's so cool. Chaotic good, domain war and tempest. Cluron, chaotic neutral. So this is your trickery god. So your uh, Loki of your campaign could be. Gesme, which seems to be the Corvum god. Their holy symbol is a gnarled oak branch burning at one end. Hanera, Rhea, Kaerith, that's cool. That reminds me of, uh, what's that Pokemon? Xerneas, that's what it reminds me of. Gaspard, Hath, Hinwin, Oh, that's so cute. And Kren. Now that's cool. Neutral evil. Yeah. I know plenty of my player characters that would choose that as their god. Apparently Ardea and Titan have this thing going on. Night versus day, good versus evil. It tells you different um, little prayers that your humble folk have to their gods. And now we're getting into some maps of the different areas. So you have the Alder Heart here, the Avium, Brackham Mill, Bandit Forest, and the Crest Mountains. Very detailed little maps. Apparently something happened here in the Scorch Grove, um, which burned down a good bit of the forest, it looks like. Traversing the wood. And this uh, campaign PDF has 226 pages in it and so does the physical copy of it and now we're getting look at this amazing artwork that kind of gives me a oh, what's that what's that movie called the secret of nim that's giving me secrets of nim vibe right there and it gives you backstories on all of the different little towns and areas more um Geography here, a little backstory so that everybody is in tuned into the different areas. And now here we go into the actual campaign itself, which this campaign is designed to take you from first level to fifth level. And there's all kinds of uh, really awesome adventure hooks. It gives you battle maps within here. I love all these little, you also have different treasure magic items that you can find like this, some kind of small, this is the nest charm. So there's all kinds of awesome uh, little potions and things that you can get. And then we're just gonna go to Some of the later stuff here. I don't want to spoil everything within this adventure. Now that is a boss monster. The Aspect of Fire. Wow. There's the final battle map. And of course, um, these PDFs actually do come with these maps. Uh, you can print them out on your own computer. Um, I don't have a printer at my house, otherwise I would have but you all can definitely do that. It also gives you the stats of the different creatures. So you have their hit points and um, all of their actions and everything here. So this little bestiary that we have for all of the different creatures, that is terrifying. <laughs> oh, I love that mountain lion. It looks like it has elemental capabilities of earth and caustic slime and here's a oh wow that thing would be able everything's so small they'd be able to that would be able to devour an entire party and then it also gives you stats on all of the different npcs 
that you're going to find within the campaign. Give that a chance to load. And of course, all of this is within your uh, um, the physical copy as well, like I said. Now let's take a look at the maps. And here are some maps that it gives you and you can print these out. The Scorched Grove, that's really cool. So let's go ahead and we will show off the next part. The reference cards. And here are the animated spell cards. Look at that. That is so cool. And they do have physical versions of these animated spell cards with the box set. Look at that. That's so cool. And what else do we have? We have these standees here that you can print out and it gives you little standees for different types of characters. So you have your Jerbeen, your Vulpin, and then you have some of the enemies, the slimes, the undead bird folk. And you can just print these off on your computer and use these little standees in your game. But they also are starting to make miniatures uh, for this. And I believe they have some of them out already. I don't have them personally in hand yet, but uh, I'm hoping to pick them up soon. So yeah, that is a little look at the Humblewood campaign settings um, from the Deck of Many. This is the PDF version, and that was a quick look at exactly what all you get within this PDF and what you can get in the box as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll just do my uh, little final take. As for my final thoughts on this campaign setting, I think that this is perfect. If you have um, some people that are just starting out um, playing and they're looking for something maybe a little bit more uh, cutesy, maybe something that's a little more um, uh, well recognized by them because you do have all of these you know, little creatures that we have in everyday life. Maybe the people that you're playing with, maybe they don't uh, understand how to play an orc or an elf or something like that. But these creatures you can connect with more because you know how they act. Um, maybe this is something that you wanna do for um, uh, just something new, so something uh, that you can get into, delve right into with your characters or maybe work it into your own campaign. There's a lot to sink your teeth into with this, a lot of great backstories um, and a lot of lore that goes into this. Maybe you just want to give your campaign a little new flair or delve into the world of Humblewood and see how far up that tree, the alder tree, you can climb yourself. I think that this is a great campaign setting if you're looking for something new, something a little uh, out of the ordinary, something to, uh, maybe you're tired of playing that uh, half-orc barbarian and you want to be a little gerbean um, and be a gerbean barbarian. Um, maybe that's something that you're wanting to do and you can head on over to the thedeckofmini.com and pick this adventure up for yourself. My take on it is pick it up. I think it's great. So gamers, that wraps up my review and take on the Deck of Minis Humblewood Campaign Settings PDF. This is an exciting adventure for you to really dig your teeth into with a lot of lore, some neat spells, new magical items. If you're looking for something that's cutesy and fun, but also has some fiery evil lurking in the back, ready to burn down the forest, this is the campaign for you. I wanted to thank each and every single one of you for giving me your time today. And I also wanted to thank the good people over at the Deck of Many for providing this review copy for us. 
Guys, if you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the Just In Case family. And if you like this video, click that like button. And if you want to see us do anything on this channel, please leave a comment in the comment section. I hope each and every single one of you have an amazing day. Stay safe out there. Be nerdy. And I'll see you in the next video.